Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Panda family. In this video, I'll explain you V2I converter using operational amplifier in great details. Before I start with explanation, let me show you how many things that I'm going to cover in this video. See, first I'll be discussing about basics of V2I converter. After that, I'll explain you what is the need of V2I converter. After that, I'll explain you different types of V2I converter. In general, there are two types, floating load and grounded load. I'll explain you floating load type of V2I converter using OPM as well as I'll explain you grounded load type V2I converter along with derivation. And at last, I'll be discussing about applications of V2I converter. So let us start this video with first agenda that is basics of V2I converter. See V2I converter means what? Here we need to convert voltage into current. So here we will be having voltage source at input side and that we are translating into current over here. Remember here this load current that is independent on load resistance RL. So as and when you use V2I converter at the time at input side we will be having voltage source at output side we will be having current and this current is not dependent on load resistance RL. So in short you can say here we will be converting voltage source into current source. Right. See what is the need of V2I converter. You will be observing in many of the industries with instrumentation and control engineering you will be using sensors. Right. So in instrumentation and control engineering we used to have sensors in industries those sensors will be measuring some quantity and outputs will be voltage. Now here these sensors are generating voltage and that sensors are apparted by long distance with display or you can say data acquisition system. So if you transfer a signal to long distance what happens you see. If you transfer given signal sense by sensors to longer distance with respect to distance that voltage will be decaying over here. So with respect to distance voltage drop happens across wire even. So with respect to distance voltage will reduce. So here what we do is we use V2I converter. As if you do voltage to current conversion then here at output side we will be having current. Now that current that will be having very minimal loss when it is transferred to a longer distance right so you see here current decay that is negligible over here compared to voltage decay right so usually in industries of instrumentation and control engineering you will be observing for longer distance we will be translating voltage into current the reason is voltage decay that happens across wire even right so if you convert voltage into current then current signal distance that is not having that much decay right so that is the basic need which is there with v2i converter now i'll be going to explain you two different types of v2i converter floating load and grounded load first of all you need to understand what is floating load See floating load means load resistance that is not connected with ground. So as if resistance is not connected with ground that resistance is considered as floating. Floating means it is not having ground. And here I will also explain you V2I converter using grounded load in which load resistance that will be connected with ground. So let us see first how floating load type V2I converter is there. So if you observe here, we have load resistance over here and this load resistance that we are connecting it with output and at inverting terminal of this op-amp means this load resistance that we are not connecting it with ground that's why this circuit is of floating load type V2I converter. Now here as I have told you when you use V2I converter at that time this load current that should be independent on load resistance RL. Let me explain you how it is independent. See here we have input voltage 
and we have negative feedback over here. There are a few basics that you should know about negative feedback. See if you have negative feedback, then with OPEM, we will be using virtual ground concept or virtual short concept. What is the meaning of it? See if you have negative feedback, then potential at positive terminal and potential at negative terminal that will be same. So here at positive terminal potential is V in. So at this terminal also potential will be V in. That is virtual short concept that also I have covered in this lecture series of analog electronics. Now here we have potential V in. One more thing that one should know. See input impedance of this op-amp that is very high. It is there in terms of mega ohm. Because of input impedance of this op-amp is very high. Current inside this op-amp if I say that is IB then that is negligible or you can say zero. So current inside this input terminal that will be negligible or one can say zero. That is negligible. Why the reason is in other branches currents are way higher compared to this IB current. Why the reason is input impedance of this op-amp that is very high. Now here if you observe see we are having load resistance right and here we give input because of this input through this RL current will be IL. Now if you apply KCL at this node then this IL current that will not go inside this terminal the reason is this is negligible current. So almost all the current that will be flowing through R1 resistor right this IL current that will no, not go inside this input terminal it will go through this R1 resistor right. So that is how IL current that will be flowing through R1 resistor. Now if you calculate voltage across this R1 then see across this R1 if you see potential difference then see here we have V in here we have ground current is there in this direction right. So you can say V in minus ground means 0 that is equals to IL R1 right. So you can say here our V in that is equals to IL R1. So if you talk about load current IL, so that is V in divided by R1. So here you see this load current which is flowing through RL that is depending on R1. It is not dependent on RL, right? So load current over here that is independent on load. So here this input voltage that we are converting into load current over here and this load current passing through this RL that is independent on RL, right? And here if you use this R1 as a precision resistor then this load current will be varying with respect to V in only. Precision resistance means R1 will not change. Right. So if we use this R1 as a precision resistor, then this load current will be dependent on V in only. So IL will vary with respect to V in only. Right. Now let me explain you second type of V2I converter that is grounded load type V2I converter. Here if you observe this load resistance RL that is grounded over here. And we need to convert this V in into IL where this IL should not be dependent on RL. Let me derive this. Let us assume here at this node potential is V1 right. Now because of V in let us say current in this R is I1 and because of output over here we have positive feedback through which current is I2 over here. Here you observe we have negative feedback. So in negative feedback you need to understand few basics. See if you have negative feedback then you should know here potential at positive terminal and negative terminal that will be same. But here we will not be using this still I am writing see here we have voltage V1. So here also we will be having voltage V1. One more thing that one should know. See, input impedance of this op-amp 
that is very high. So current inside this input terminal of open that will be zero, right? That will be always zero. Now what I'll do is I'll be considering KCL at node V1. So here at this node, if you observe, see input current is I1 and I2 and output currents are IL and IB2, but IB2 will be negligible or you can say it is zero. So you can say I1 plus I2 that is equals to IL over here as per KCL, right? Now here you need to understand what is I1. See I1 that is happening because of potential difference V in and V1, right? So what is I1? I1 is V in minus V1 divided by R. I1 is V in minus V1 divided by R. And what is I2? See, I2 is happening because of potential difference V out and V1. It is happening in this direction. So I2 is V out minus V1 divided by R. I2 is V out minus V1 divided by R that is equals to IL, right? Now let us simplify this. So see this R that will go on other side. So we'll be having V in and then you see minus V1 minus V1. So there will be minus 2 V1 and then plus V out that will be having and this R that will go on other side. So that will be that will be R into IL, right? Now here one more thing that you need to understand, see, here we have, we have negative feedback and potential at this positive terminal that is V1. So what is the output because of V1? So output because of V1 that is happening as per negative feedback and non-inverting configuration. So what should be my output? You should know my dear students, I have explained that if you have voltage input at positive terminal then output because of voltage at positive terminal that will be this v1 into gain due to non-inverting configuration gain due to non-inverting configuration is how much 1 plus rf by r1 here rf is r and r1 is also r so here v1 into 1 plus r by r so this rr will get cancelled so V out that is equals to 2V1. So if you substitute V out is equals to 2V1 in this, then you can further simplify this equation. You see how V in minus 2V1 and V out is 2V1, right? So that is equals to R into IL. This is getting cancelled. So you can say V in, you can say V in that is equals to R into IL. Here, if you observe, see what we want to convert. We want to convert this voltage into current and this current IL that should not be dependent on RL. So if you observe, see here IL, here IL current that is V in divided by R where this load current that is not dependent on RL, it is dependent on V in and R. And here value of R that is fixed. So here at load, you can connect any resistor across which you will be getting current IL that is only dependent on V in, right? So that is how we can have grounded type V to I converter. Now let us talk about applications. So when you talk about applications, as I have told you, broadly we can use that in instrumentation and control engineering. In instrumentation and control engineering, as I have told you, sensors will be sensing data. That data will be converted into voltage by sensors. But here, the sensors are having longer distance with respect to data acquisition system. So if you travel signal with voltage, then there will be decay in voltage. So what we do is we convert voltage into current. So there will be less decay and same data that we can give it to data acquisition system or display. So here major application is there in instrumentation and control engineering. There are some other applications even like we can use this in DC and AC voltmeters 
for diode match finders also we can use v2 by converter as well as for testing of led testing of zener diode we can use v2 by converter so that is how applications are there i hope you have understood this session still if anything that you would like to share please note it down in comment section i'll be happy to help you thank you so much for watching this video